Coming up on Mountain News this morning, the Omicron variant continues to take its toll in hospitals across the Commonwealth and some funding by the state government grants families impacted by the deadly tornado outbreak last month some extra help. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News this morning. Good morning, it's Friday. Thank you for joining us and it's six o'clock and boy, I'm already struggling. Let's take it over to meteorologist Cameron Aaron for a look of our forecast. And Cameron, you said right now it's snowing in Rockcastle County, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, some snow yeah. is coming down at the I-75 camera in Rockcastle County and snow is coming down in Moorhead over in Rowan County. So a lot of people are waking up to some snow showers this morning and that's going to continue as we go throughout the rest of your Friday. Let's take a look at that I-75 camera. You can see here some snow showers are on the way down and that is going to continue pushing off towards the east with that band of snow showers. Temperatures in those upper 20s to lower 30s right at freeze for many people this morning, like Jackson, Hazard, Somerset, Monticello, all of you guys waking up at 32, 30 in Irvin, Moorhead and Ashland, 28 over in Williamsburg. Here is a look at pinpoint Doppler this morning. Some pretty heavy snow showers just to the east of Louisa or just to the west of Louisa, excuse me, just off towards the south of I-64. All of this pushing off towards the south and east. So all of us really got a chance to look at those snow showers later on today. Most of us are included in this winter weather advisory that goes until 10 a or 7 a.m. on your Saturday. Those three counties from Moorhead, uh, Rowan County to Menifee County to Powell County, that does expire at 10 a.m. on your Friday, but the rest of us are included until Saturday. As we go throughout the rest of your day, those temperatures topping out in those middle 30s, we stay mostly cloudy, watching out for those snow showers as well. I got your full forecast for the weekend and a warm up maybe next week coming up. Dakota. All right, Cameron, thank you. Well, Senator Rand Paul seems to have a comfortable lead in the Senate race this year. In a news release from the Mason Dixon polling and strategy, new data shows that Senator Paul holds a 55% to 39% advantage over his de Democratic challenger, Charles Booker. Well, that same release also shows that Governor Andy Bashir's job performance rating has gone up during the past year. According to the release, statewide, 60% of Kentuckians approve of the job Governor Bashir is doing. That's up from 55% during February 2021, 32% disapprove, and 8% are unsure. Well, Kentucky is still fighting the latest COVID-19 surge. The state added more than 12,700 new cases yesterday. Now I added 39 new deaths. The positivity rate is down slightly to 31.6%. Hospitalizations remain above 2,500 and 473 people are currently in the ICU. Folks, be careful. When this happens, we don't have room or beds for people hurt in car accidents or who have strokes. This is the danger here is bigger than just COVID. Well, you can always find the latest COVID-19 information on our website at WYMT.com. Well, the governor says while the Omicron variant has proven less deadly, it is infecting more people and hospitalizing the same amount. Patients are filling up ICUs too. Right now, less than 100 adult ICU beds are available across Kentucky. But some encouraging news is Omicron seems to have peaked and will hopefully soon go down. If we follow the trends that others are, if this week is higher than last week, then next week we truly believe will be lower. Now, even if it's lower, it's still going to be too high. So we got to we got to ride the the the, the dip uh, a couple weeks, but we hope that it uh, descends as fast as it as it ascended. The other concerning news: hospitalizations across the state are near the record numbers like we saw last summer when Delta peaked. One of the hospital systems filling the strain is Baptist Health. Across the system, around 500 COVID patients are being taken care of. At Baptist Health Floyd in New Albany, Indiana, healthcare workers are seeing patient numbers fluctuate in the 60s. And as data shows, in the past, most of their patients are unvaccinated. About 80 to 85 percent of our patients are unvaccinated that are coming into the hospital. So while Omicron may be, you know, infecting people that have been vaccinated, we're not seeing those patients in the hospital. Doctors are also seeing staffing shortages impacting their workplaces with burnout. At home, COVID-19 test kits roll out. Healthcare professionals are stressing the importance of paying attention not only to directions, but also keeping a close eye on the materials you're using. 
As Marley Pingchok explains, the West Virginia Poison Center says it's already seen cases where people have mixed up their eye drops with the one in the pieces in the kit containing certain chemicals. As at-home COVID-19 testing kits make their way to doorsteps, healthcare professionals are stressing the importance of paying attention to instructions to avoid putting yourself in a hazardous situation. Anytime we have something novel and new come into a household, we typically see an increase in calls to poison centers across the United States. Dr. Elizabeth Sharman, who is the clinical and executive director of the West Virginia Poison Center, says a key material in the testing kit looks a lot like something many people use in their daily routine. We're already seeing cases where people have their eye drops on their bathroom counter. They've got this solution that they've set out from the kit on their counter, and then they inadvertently put the um, test kit solution in their eye instead of their eye drops. Sharman says while severe poisonings from the contents of the kit are not expected, mistakes can cause unwanted symptoms. With anything, it's always about the dose and the concentration. So fortunately, with the concentrations in these products, at worst case, most people are going to get um, irritation from it. So it may um, sting your eyes, it may burn your nose. Um, which we can manage. So to avoid making the mix up or risking younger children getting their hands on these materials, Sharman recommends using the kit immediately and throwing away the pieces right after. Until everyone gets the hang of them, it's easy to, mis to misuse them. So just know you're not alone if it takes a little bit of time for you to figure out how to use the kit. Navigating a new way to test while having guidance from healthcare professionals along the way. Marley Pinchuk, WSAZ News Channel 3, Charleston. Doctors also say there will never be a time when you put the nasal swab in the solution first. Now, if this happens, well, the test is ruined. Kentucky's top ranking state House Democrat has announced she will not be seeking re-election this year. State Representative Joni Jenkins says she will not stand in the way of a person of color being elected in her newly redrawn Louisville area district. She also says black people make up nearly 50% of the voting age population. The representative says she will maintain her legislative and caucus leadership seat through her term. The Owsley County Superintendent says he plans to retire later this year. Dr. Tim Bobrowski has served as superintendent for 11 years. He says each year the school board works to achieve its goals and he believes they did. We asked him what his message is to his successor. You, you have to be committed. Committed means uh, you, you have to keep this job number one. You have to keep these kids and these staff members, you know, they're all the focal point of your career. The superintendent went on to say he works with the great school board, teachers and students. He also thanks them for allowing him to serve their community. Families impacted by the deadly tornado outbreak in western Kentucky are getting temporary homes. The trailers will first help those with school-age children or families with young children who work in their communities. They will reportedly house 200 families. The 200 trailers are being paid for by House Bill 5A. Now that bill passed unanimously by the House and Senate. You can see the work of the General Assembly, uh, the cooperation between these branches of government. Each trailer is 27 to 36 feet long and includes a microwave, sinks, beds, oven, fridge, and even more. Transportation Cabinet is responsible for hooking up utilities and monitoring the campers during weather events. Volunteers from the Home Depot Foundation and Team Rubicon traveled to Mayfield to help with tornado damage. Volunteers came from areas like Bowling Green to help sort and remove debris. This is one of the many cleanup days Team Depot participated in during the past month in Mayfield. After the December tornadoes, Team Depot volunteers sent more than 1,000 disaster relief kits to several cities impacted areas, including Bowling Green. The Home Depot Foundation has also committed up to $1 million for immediate disaster response and long-term recovery efforts in the impacted communities. Today is a severe weather alert day because snow showers are continuing to push into our area. Let's take a look at that camera over at I-75 in Mount Vernon. Some snow is continuing to fall here at this location over in Rock Castle County. 
Temperatures are in the upper 20s to lower 30s this morning. 32 for Jackson and Hazard and Pikeville. 29 in Harlan. 28 over in Williamsburg. Here's a look at Pinpoint Doppler right now. Most of us are actually dry right now. However, we do have those snow showers, some heavier snow showers, mainly off to our north from near Louisa, stretching over to near West Liberty. That is a pretty heavy band right there, and that's all pushing off towards the south, and that will impact most of us later on this afternoon and into the evening as well. Most of us are also under a winter weather advisory until Saturday morning. All the counties in purple there, that is that winter weather advisory. The forecast for your Friday, temperatures topping out in those middle 30s. We stay mostly cloudy and watch out for those scattered snow showers as well. I'll get the full details on what you can expect today and into your weekend coming up just a little bit later. Dakota. All right, Cameron, thank you so much. Well, coming up here on Mountain News this morning, the U.S. responds to Russia's demands as troops prepare for a possible invasion in Ukraine. We'll have more on that all the way.